Welcome back to Golden Channel. In this video, I'm going to help a solo learner. So first of all, I have and go to the discuss session of the solo learn. And here, I have found an interesting session. All right, which is this one? Most recent one. So this is uh, his question. He wants to add by next more than three books and the badminton and uh, let's look into his demonstration so solo learn is a, a platform so you can learn uh, something there and we also have a QA and a session so uh, when we ask questions the other solo learners to help so let's look at the code let's try to run it Uh, this is his code, he has the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript is here in the HTML. So there's the two button, uh, next and back. If we click next, it goes to the two. If we click next, it can go to three. And if we click back, it goes back to one. If we look into the source code, it's one, two, three, three boxes. And he want to uh, make the first change, so when we click next, and we will go to 2 and click the next again, it will go to 3. Um, so let's uh, it off. So here is his implementation. This is by Saif. Hello, my Saif. And here, the first div is with ID 1, the second div with ID 2, and the third div with ID 3. And then the back and next button back function and next function. The next function is using getting the elements by uh, ID and then he will style the uh, 1 and 2 only. He won't style 3. And for the web content, he will get, we see, 3 and 4. So he is also getting 1 and 2 and tries to store in a variable called 3 and 4. And here, he just style the 1 and 2. It is not right, right? Because his variable is 3 and 4. Somehow it works because that he doesn't get the variable in JavaScript. But because this is ID and HTML, when an element has an ID, it is like a bigger property. So later he can use this uh, in the JavaScript as a stack element. So actually, he doesn't need this line. So for example, if we uh, comment out these two lines, and if we comment out these two lines, we can achieve the same result. So let's run again. So if we include next, we can also access the element. So this is because it doesn't need the element ID. Because this one is uh, uh, storing this element into the variable called one. Alright. And now let's uh, look at the uh, help by Pono. So Pono try to uh, implement a change. And let's look into the code of Pono. one now has uh, removed the button and he has the next button so if we click the next button it goes to if we click next again it goes back to one so uh, so now the next button can look back to one but it's not solving the problem of not going to free so uh, and his method is setting a variable and then using uh, increment to change it so it goes back to one or let us go to 1 or go back to 0. So this is uh, using the if statement to check if the number is 0 to 1. So it is back and forth. And so here we can sort the questions by uh, time. For example, we can sort by day. So first of all, Pono answered and myself uh, explained that he need to uh, output should be next by page of more than 4 blocks. So there may be uh, more than three boxes, and so I promise to uh, write a film this video for him. And so first of all, let me uh, open the, my VS Code and copy his source code. So this is the source code here. Let's copy into the JavaScript. So this is the index doc. Uh, 
And here let's add the CSS as well. So let's save it and add the CSS as well. Because this is very simple demo, I'm going to add it uh, in the page. Alright, so just let it add it in the page. And now uh, I want to uh, live server, open the live server to check it. So this is the current version, we can click next and if we click next again, it doesn't go to feed. If we click again, it goes back to 1. It doesn't go to feed. So first of all, uh, what we want to implement is The first one is we need to have, if we want to go to free, we need to use a variable to store the state. So for example, we have a variable which is to store the current page. So current page. Uh, I assume that it is page, so I'm going to draw so it's current page and we can initialize it to zero because usually the first one is zero. So now we want to uh, increment this page when we click next and then uh, decrement this page when we click next. So let's try it. For example, if we in the next we want to change the current page to uh, the next value. Yes, yes. So it is good, good habit to console log it first. So if we console log the current page, we can see that it is actually incremented. So before we do any further coding, we should console log to check if the variable is incrementing correctly. So let's go back to the live server. This is a live server, and we can click the inspect. And we go to console. So now we haven't checked anything. So this. Let me see. Let me zoom. Uh, I don't need to be in. Right? I don't need to be responsive. So here, if we click next, we can see that variable is incremented. If we click next again, it keeps incrementing. So this is uh, incrementing a variable current page. This, this is the first step. And the next step is we want to uh, show the current corresponding element based on this current page. So here we should uh, try to get this variable and assign this as zero. This is one and this is two. Okay. So how to get this variable? We should use a class name or a data set. So I try to create symbol. I use a class name. So for example, this is they all have a class called box. So they all have a class called box. And now I need to uh, add the element. So let a boxes be a element. So I need to add it from the document. And here I can use um, elements by class name. So add elements by class name this one. And the class name is, what is it? Is it in it? And now we should uh, console log it first. Console log the boxes. All right, boxes. Try to be grammatically correct. So I think yes, the pro form. So now let's uh, go back to the live server and check it. Now we can see that uh, it has a HTML version with three elements: so zero, one, and two. It's great. Zero is here. Two and three is not shown yet. It's great. So now we have three elements. And now we can comment this one. And now we are going to display the correct boxes based on the current pages. So here, instead of styling one and two, we should be, instead of styling one and two, based on the ID, we should be uh, setting them to be uh, one first. So I should set uh, boxes zero, box style, display okay i just copy the above so zero to start out display equals then says one style dot display uh equals none and 
plus two plus down it's very equal to none. So this is just hiding every I said every process and I want to display the correct one so I will say process now I don't put a number here I put the variable here I put this current page here when the current page is here now dot display equals block so only uh, uh where one will be shown so let's try it so i haven't touched the button yet i'm just uh, uh, fixing the next button and we are doing this step by step so there will be some and i do it intentionally for a demonstration purpose so now when we click the next button we go to two and what will happen next when we click the next button again the current pages will increment again to two and for two it is uh, calling the third uh, class with the boxes so if we click next it should be i'm free that's right see when we click next the current page becomes two and two it means that goes to find the third element in the array so the third element is hello i'm free so this is soft we can get third, uh, boxes now now the problem occurs, a new problem. If we click next again, it will happen. So we need to check the logic. If we click the next button again, this next button again, we will call the next function again. And here, if we call the next function again, then it will increment the current page again. So it will become two to three. And when it becomes three, after uh, styling all the boxes to none, it will try to find the fourth element to style it as block. And because it is an fourth element, so there will be an error. So let's try it. We click next again. See, all the boxes are hidden. Now it's in quotes type error. And now read property of undefined. What does that mean? It means that this one is the style that is played. It's trying to style something. It tries to look for an element. This element doesn't exist at all. So that's what this error message means. In quotes type error. And not read properties of undefined, and the solution is very simple. So here we go back to uh, this one. Current pages we should add a checker before. So uh, we should add an if statement here. If current pages is uh, is less than uh, two, if it's less than two, we increment it. So we can uh, add one more indentation here. So if it is zero, it will be incremented one. If it is one, it will be incremented two. And if it is two, it, this one returns four. And so this one will be executed. So it won't try to uh, cross the map. So let's save it and try to uh, try again. So if we click next, it's the second box. If we click next again, it will the third box. And if we click next again, it won't uh, change. See, won't change. And when we console out the uh, current page, it is still two. The reason is here because when it and the current page is two already, this one is false, so it won't uh, increment. So this is how to implement the next uh, function. Uh, so I suggest you, if you understand the above, you can try to uh, pause the video and try to uh, implement the same on the back function with the same uh, logic. So you can try first. And after you try, you can uh, continue the video and I will show my answer to you. Right, so I suppose that you have uh, paused already and attempt already. So I'm going to uh, take the solution now. So basically, you do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to just copy this one here. And then copy this one. One, let me then it quickly. Okay. And here for the back button, we want to increment the current page. So we want to change from uh, 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. No further. So we should increment the current page. It shouldn't happen when it is 0 or less. So we should do it opposite thing. So if the current page is bigger than zero, it means two or one, it should be documented. And we can check it by clicking the current page. And then the boxes will be, all the boxes will be hidden, and the current one will be uh, displayed. So 
I have saved it and let's try it. So I have incremented that one. So if we click on back now, it doesn't happen because the current page is still zero. If next, we go to two. If we click back, it goes back to one. If we click next, next, it goes to three. If we click back, it goes to two. If we click back again, it goes back to one. See? So this is how to implement uh, this logic for three, three pages. So the first one is we need to have a variable to store the current page. And the second uh, uh, key is we need to use get element by class name to store them into a HTML collection. So uh, if HTML collection is unfamiliar, unfamiliar to you, just think of it as an array. And in the text function, we need to increment the current page. In the back function, we need to uh, increment this uh, variable current page. We need to add a checker, so we don't want to increment it if it is already the last one, and we don't want to decrement it if it is already the first one. And at the console log, we can remove it now because we don't need it now. And then uh, for the display, we, we just uh, hidden everything and we only show the red one. Okay, so this is for the uh, uh, free box version. So if we go back into the question of uh, Mosaif, so he want to um, for box more than four. So we want to do it generic. So if there is more than three box, what should we do? So let's go back to the. Yeah, actually, we just need a slight moderation. So here, suppose that we have more than three box. For example, I create a fourth box. Let me just. Copy it. Let me call it four, and with the score, and this is four. Okay. So if we work for four, then it can work for ten or even more. Okay. So uh, now, if we click on the four, if we just save it. This can go to the four. Okay. If we just save it, we have the four here. But if we try to click it, let me see. Uh, okay, it is not start, so I need to go to the styling. Okay, so he has uh, box one, box two, box three. So I need to uh, start it. Let me see. Uh, the box four, I need to make it display now. Okay. Display now. And then I need to add a big one to make it stand up. So let's make it a big one of uh, link, for example. Okay. So, Example, we have a let's save it. Save. Okay, this is four. Okay, the four box. The four box is not displayed. So if we click next, 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 we go to three only and stop here. And uh, if we just uh, change here from two to three, we can work too. This is not the generic way. So if we change the three here, this is not what I want to show you. Work two, you can go to the fourth one too, and it won't go to the fifth. This is not what I want to show you. So I need, and you can see that when we go to the fourth and we click back, both appear because we need to uh, try this one. So we need to go back to here and add one more line here. So this is not the right way to do it. Okay. So uh, let's change it to two first. And now what we want to do is we need to uh, get the number of elements here. So we need to know how many number of boxes here. So we should here we have get all the everything into the uh, get element by passing and let's also lock this again and show you. So here I have uh, get all the elements by class name. So I have one, two, three, four, four, five. and this one console lock the process. So it is HTML collection and it has a property called length. It has a property called length. So this is basically uh, Telling you how many boxes are there. So we need to use this length property. So here, uh, the maximum, we will add a, uh, another uh, variable. Let's make it a meaningful variable. Number of boxes equals to boxes.length. We use boxes.length, and there are four diff, we will uh, store four. If there are five boxes, then it will get five and store into this variable. And actually, this is a constant, so let's use constant instead. 
see you are using, using ESX, ESX LED, so I'm using ESX constant. So here, instead of two, it shouldn't be two anymore. It should be uh, the box length minus one. So which is the number of box minus one? Minus one. So when it is uh, four, I want to stop uh, when the uh, current page becomes three. And here, for the document, it should stop when it is greater than zero. So it will stop. It won't document anymore when it is zero. So no change here. And here, when we want to hide everything, we want to use a for loop. So instead of uh, doing it manually, we want to uh, use for loop to do it. So for loop, that I equals to. Okay, I should, I should demonstrate why I should do this now. So maybe I will uh, keep it here and let you see the error here. So if I just uh, use this one, so let me try to here. Now if I click next, it goes to. Then next it goes to three. Then next it goes to four. Then next it doesn't go to five because I have uh, set a maximum here. Maximum here. And but when we click back, see the three is here and the four isn't hidden. The reason is here we haven't hit hide the fourth one. So let me comment this out and use the for loop. So when we use the for loop for i equals to Zero, and then I will be smaller than uh, length. So we need to get this length is really stored into a number of boxes. And paste, and then I will increment from zero to the number of boxes. And I want to hit the boxes. So boxes, I will have a star dot display. So this is to hide all the boxes. And I want to do the same and I hit the back button. So I want to I put the same here. And this free we can come and this out because we don't need to do it generic. Uh, we can do it with the for loop. So let's save and come back to here. And now it should be uh very good. So if we click the next it goes to two, click next it goes to three, click next it goes to four, click that it goes to three, and the fourth one is hidden. Back it goes to two. The third one is hidden, and click one is the one. And uh, let's try it by let's test the software. I think even more diff, so D4, D5, D6. This should be FD, uh, uh, right here, five, six. So this is the fifth one, this is the sixth one. And here I want to uh, hide this space. So let's go to uh, start on the casting with the box. Okay, so I just want to start all the casting with the display now. Then I want to place the first one. So I go back to the first one and move it down. So I want to have the first one. Uh, I think this one is zero one zero. The specificity. This one is one zero zero. So this one should override it. Let's try it. If I if I save it, I go back. Okay, the first one is not so. So I should get one more specific thing. For example, this one. Okay, not so. So uh, here, if it is not so, and I, I I want everything to be dependent without the first one. I should wait to say should do come not. Not. First chart. Okay. So this one should be uh, uh, the first one will not be hidden. So uh, this is the I want to explain them for every box and not the first one. So this is the geodo element for the CSS. So click click click, fifth, six. So we can go to the fifth and the sixth one. You see, and we don't need to add even more code in the JavaScript because we already uh, get the length here, get the length here, and store it into this one based on how many HTML elements are there. See? So this is the right way to do it. And uh, 
will post the link here and I will uh, post the source code in the solo line and the link here too. So I hope this helps you. Safe. Thank you. Bye.